expand over time is uh, is really good for the city's management. I think our current process to use is sound management, sound engineering being used. Um, like I said, you know, what happened in the 70s and 80s, how things got developed, things evolved, things changed as we begin to understand what happened to our uh, streams and rivers or water, wastewater treatment plants, wherever this infrastructure was going to, we started to really understand the ramifications rather than basically, a, I should say, a free-for-all, but anything goes type development. Um, like I said, I think the current subdivision rules are, are, are pretty sound. Engineering has worked on those quite a bit with the planning board to make sure that they represent sound uh, current engineering practices. I did want to make a note about the Board of Public Works and their no recommendation uh, was the fact that there is no proposed project and therefore why are they making any recommendation to change zoning, spot zoning of parcel? So, and there may be some assumptions built into say so if, if I make the wrong assumption, please let me know. One assumption is that there are some definite drainage problems in the area. Um, and another is that even though I think everybody in, in made the best uh, effort they could and abided by all of the uh, ordinances and procedures that were in place, we still have a problem in that area. And that there is no guarantee that we won't continue to have a problem. And I think that's one of the concerns here is that this, there's been a problem for quite a long time, and the problem that currently exists doesn't seem to be able to be taken care of. In part, it might be taken care of if we get the money to have a stormwater system and the fees in place, and it's, it's a money issue of getting that <coughs> done. But I think that's some of the question here is we've already got a problem in the area. Are we going to exacerbate that problem? Can someone guarantee us we won't? And again, as you pointed out, I think once it moves along, I think this was your initial question. Yes, there should be safeguards at the planning board or at the CONSCOM or other places, but we are one of those safeguards, I believe, here. And I think in the past, everybody was doing their job in the best way they could, mm -hmm. but yet we still had problems. And I think one of the questions is, is it our responsibility to make sure that there be some way that there is more assurance that the problem won't be exacerbated and, in fact, will yeah, and then I also want to recognize, because I said it would citizens who had comments too. Yeah. And I think, I'm trying to, the first street I think I built in the city, I think it was about 34 years ago, maybe 33 years ago. And then even into the 80s, if you're looking for subdivision control, um, I built several streets in the 80s in Northampton. And one of them that I remember very well, had a four acre pond that was eight feet deep. I think I put 57,000 yards of fill in it and just eliminated the pond. All, with all the proper rules. I mean, uh, things change. Things change. I mean, you know, you could, today you'd be in a slammer if you did it. Um, but, but things do change anymore. You know, you have, to, you have to try and figure out just exactly how you want to move forward on this. But what would be the remedy for the private property owners should their property continue to be rolled and losing bankings, uh, what would, would it be a claim against who? The DPW, the city, the plane? I don't have that answer. <laughs> but I mean, you know, but it, 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 it's a fair question. What would the remedy be for impact of private property owners? When you're dumping your city's water onto their property, there must be some remedy. And that's why I get nervous. I just, could we make Lathrop pipe, if they wanted to put a subdivision in, could they pipe it all the way down to the river and close it? Couldn't make them do that, could you? I don't know if you'd achieve, achieve all the permits to do that. <laughs> the rest of my case. Thank you. Yeah, Councilor Schwartz, and I do want to recognize. All oh, right, you can recognize first. Right. You sure? Okay. Yes, come on forward. I'm Dave Cotton. I live at 736 Bridge Road. And we were a party to helping Lathrop with the original project. And my father and I were in support of it because of the value to the seniors. And when they developed it, Lathrop and the engineers gave us assurances that there wouldn't be any changes in flow onto our properties. And when they 
stripped the 20 acres, when they cleared the 20 acres and started the development for the 90 units or whatever they had, we experienced extremely heavy flows with a lot of silt during the course of construction. And they attempted to mitigate it during construction, but they weren't able to solve it. And so we had a lot of erosion, and, but we, it wasn't to the point where we felt that we had been lied to or led astray. And so once they got it uh, finished and they got all their storm containment in and they, they got vegetation growing, it diminished somewhat, but over the past 24 years, 25 years, pretty much two or three times a year, I have to regrade parts of my meadow because it washes out. And back, I had done it back in June and receded it uh, down in the very bottom where the flow comes through. And this past November, we had a pretty heavy storm and it washed out over two and a half or three feet deep and of course sends a lot of silt downstream. And so we have experienced long-term continuing heavy flows, and of course as the weather has become more severe, like Mr. Huntley said, with the increasing rain flows, it's been more significant, we've had it for longer duration. But my concern is now with that 12-inch high-pressure gas main that feeds the UMass power plant, um, and somebody had mentioned that it would, if, if the road failed, chances are the gas main would fail also, and that would flood the Walmart Big Y property, which is about 38 acres with explosive levels of gases potentially within three minutes. And it, it could take potentially an hour or more to shut that pipe off because of where the containment valves are from one of the engineers I talked with at, at Berkshire Gas. And so my concern is not just that the road would wash out like it did in 55 when it was much lower, but that if we had a catastrophic failure of Hatfield Street, it would it would fracture the main, this 12-inch high-pressure gas main, and it would create a real public hazard that could make some of these incidents like Springfield look like a, a, a fairy tale. This could be severe. And the fact that Big Y wasn't there in 55 and the road was 12 feet lower, and there was a calculation made by um, somebody at one of the meetings that there would be about 20 million gallons of water that would be explosively released when this impromptu dam of Hatfield Street failed, and it would cascade down behind Steve Sesko's house and Richard Jeske's house. And if I'm right, Mr. Hunter, I know water's about eight pounds a gallon. So in my mind, that equates to 160 million pounds of water being explosively released that would go in and blow out Cook Avenue. And we maintained the big white parking lot in Walmart in the wintertime. And I was out cleaning up behind uh, Ken's eyewear uh, a month or so uh, ago, and I was looking up across Cook Avenue, and I'm looking at the path the water would take, and that wall of water would impact the back of Ken's eyewear and what we call the tenant stores, and they're just cinder black buildings. And I got thinking, if, if a 30 mile an hour or 20 mile an hour wall of water that weighs 160 million pounds impacted the buildings, it would blow the buildings apart, and then the only place for it to go is right down into the Big White Shopping Center. So it, it's a fairly significant problem, and that's why I've been attentive to the ongoings of the information, and it's just, in the last storm, uh, Steve Sesco and I viewed it, this last storm we had on Monday, I think it was, and we got nine-tenths of one inch of rain, and the area to the north side of Hatfield Street had about four and a half feet of water in it, and the 30-inch culvert was completely overwhelmed, and it was boiling out on the south side, and there was, it, it remained for about 12 hours. And the watershed absorbs some of that nine-tenths of an inch of rain, even though it's frozen in certain areas out in the woods, it's, it's still not frozen because of the organic material. So there was some absorptive effect. So maybe there was half an inch of rain that was shed from the watershed in all the areas. But it was significant, and I can only imagine if we get in a 13 inches of rain, the superstorm Sandy dumped on Long Island, what the catastrophic effects could have been. So it, it you know, from a layman's eye, because I'm not an engineer, a civil engineer, when I look at it and it, it comes to light, it scares me. As my family's there, and of course, uh, I've known Steve Sesco and Richard Jeske my whole life, and, and Richard does have a problem, Richard Jeske has a problem, because right now, with the extended flows, they're starting to undermine the bank, and his house sits up on top of a 50-foot ridge, and it's getting to the point where that 50-foot embankment is going to start sloughing, and he doesn't have many feet to his foundation. And it's only one house, and 
you know, if, if it eroded and he lost the house, he could move it forward or rebuild the bank or whatever. But there's some significance to the gas main and the potential <coughs> flows that we're starting to see. And, and with the weather becoming more severe, as Mr. Huntley had said, where we've almost doubled the rainfall and we have no idea what's in store for us in the future. And that's why um, I'm concerned and I would prefer to use a little restraint in rezoning the piece of property because engineering, from what I understand, is based on past history and what they understand today. But the engineering that my father and I were a party to when they built the first Lathrop, it dramatically was different than what they reflected to us. And I think it's if they, they did the best they could but they weren't accurate with their predictions because of changing weather or uh, maybe the materials the contractors used weren't as absorptive and they shed more water. But we got a lot more water than what they had reflected to me we were going to have. And it, it only stays for a day or two, and now it stays for three or four days. And so, it, you know, I, I still think the Lathrop's a good, the original Lathrop, I'm still glad that I supported it. But it has been a little bit of an issue. But the real concern is that 12-inch high-pressure gas vein in Hatfield Street, and if we had that huge discharge of water, the potential damage you could do to that brand new facility down at the shopping centers. Thank you. Steve. I'll just say on that assisted living community started to sound good to me where we were up on the hill. Uh, Especially with all the problems we have around us, and the yeah, fact that are online. and my knee that I just did in. So, mm -hmm. anyways, I'll try not to repeat, and uh, but I, there's a lot to cover here, and I wasn't prepared to uh, cover all this tonight. I thought we were, it was going to be a little simpler uh, situation here, but uh, I just want to mention the fact that in Chapter 40A, if you read Chapter 40A annotated, the annotated version. Uh, there are, there is case law that says that uh, to any rezoning con uh, consideration by city council or town meeting or any committee should consider all input and impacts. And I can't cite you the cases because I didn't think I'd need them tonight, but I could get you that information if you want. It, it's, uh, that's something that's come out of the uh, of that statute over time, that these things should be considered. If we're not considering it, everything is not in a vacuum. Uh, I am concerned that one counselor, uh, or one member of the uh, committee is, uh, is here and not here, and is a voting member, and uh, I, I wasn't here last time, hasn't heard the whole story, and I, and I don't want to repeat it all. Uh, but I am concerned about that in terms of the vote. Uh, I'm also concerned that uh, Chapter 40A also indicates that uh, any, any rezoning petition which expires, which this petition did uh, the day following Martin Luther King Day, it actually expired Martha, Mar Martin Luther King Day, but you get another day because it's a holiday, uh, should not be considered further. So I would ask you, hold true to that. Uh, you, I guess you can give an informal recommendation. That's what you desire. But I don't want to give you any ideas. Uh, in terms of Mr. Huntley's uh, description of the situation, he keeps indicating that the culvert under Hatfield Street, the main culvert for Pine Brook, not, not the culvert that comes out of Mr. Cotton's property onto my property and then in to the downstream portion of that main culvert was blocked in 2007. And I don't agree and uh, because when I opened my shade in the morning, there was a 10-foot upwell on the downstream side of that culvert. So it may be, it might have been impeded or partially blocked, but it certainly was not blocked. And that's the, the, the damming by Hatfield Street, which was complete during that storm, was a true damming and overwhelming, in my opinion. Uh, I also bring a set of photos, which I won't pass around, only because they're not organized and uh, you have no idea what 
have the, what you're looking at, but this was from the storm last week. And it, it illustrates, because of the frozen ground, I think, even though it was a small rainstorm, it, it really does show the entire situation and the problems. And again, the culvert was not blocked in this storm, which would be a picture here, which uh, shows a significant swelling of Pine Brook under a 0.9 inch storm. And what we've been maintaining since the beginning here is that, you know, I mean, one inch storms are in this area are routine. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of additional runoff from all the sources that Mr. Huntley mentioned. They've all created this problem. There's the choke point at Cook Avenue behind the Big Y strip mall. Uh, but uh, what we're, we're really concerned about is the big storm, which is coming, the 50-year or the 100-year storm. And I think the, the Board of Public Works dropped the ball during their, uh, their uh, recommendation when they said that this is just a private property issue and we have no interest in this. All of this water crosses public property. All of the water that comes from Dave Cotton's property, crosses public property to get to my property. And I know the city is probably saying to themselves that uh, unlike the fairground situation, uh, the people here are disorganized and, and not of great means, and they won't protect their property. And I would indicate to the city that don't bet on it. We may not be able to afford a 650 dollar an hour lawyer, but we're not going to allow our property to be damaged <clears throat> any further. And uh, let's see, what else can I say here? Uh, there is a public safety issue here. There's been a, there was a public safety issue behind my residence that was ignored for years. The city, um, Mr. Uh, Ward 3 Councilor a few meetings ago indicated that we had protections. We've informed the city of public safety issues and such regarding this drainage system and they've been ignored. Where is our protection? We're asking you to protect us by maintaining the status quo as it is until we can figure out how we're going to handle this situation. And. Uh, if you'd like, I'll get you these pictures or whatever other information. Just please request it from me because I can't do it right now. And at that, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. I'd like to entertain the individual to just step back a second. What we're, what we're going to do with this in terms of any actionable step. Um, I think that what we're being asked to do, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that we're being asked to, to whether it's formal or informal, recommend or not recommend <coughs> this zoning change. Is, is that the assumption of other councils as well? Okay. Yes. So that's, if we could have a motion again on the floor, so then it's, the discussion is around that specific thing and entertain a motion to that effect. I'd like to make a motion that if we do anything, that we send this uh, off to the council with no recommendation. Second. I, I, with, I love to, I love with to no recommendation. That. Send this up, or, or, or would you rather? Let me just clarify. Point question: Would it be possible to also send it on with a recommendation that we do not support? Absolutely. Want, okay. Which would be so, even better? Okay, so we may want a more general um, question on the floor. Okay. Okay. If, you, if you'd like to be part right. that. More general question where we have the option of either sending it out with a recommendation, sending it out without a recommendation, or saying it. we can't do that. So,
support this in moving forward. We do not support it, or we're moving it forward with no recommendation. With that said, Councilor, which would uh, I'd like to make a recommendation that we not support it. Do I hear a second? A second. Yes, discussion. I guess I feel like it's clear that as things currently exist, they should not be expanded. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, do, I feel like I'm, I'm convinced that I would want, I, I'm the, the layperson par excellence on this, and I would want experts studying this and um, analyzing it and um, bringing their opinion about what is necessary to make any kind of additional facility safe to everybody in this community. Um, so I, I'm thoroughly convinced that they should not be building that. I am less convinced around, um, and, and I appreciate that we are, our role, we, we can be one of those barriers if we think that the systems are not good enough. Part of me feels most comfortable with a qualified, uh, a qualified no recommendation, meaning uh, like no position, in that I, I don't feel equipped to make a recommendation one way or the other. I feel like we're, we, we should, we should be saying until and unless there is better reassurance that we would not support this zoning, but but that there there's I just feel well, like we could, if Councilor, the on the floor right now is the motion to not recommend. Uh, if that were not to pass, you could make a recommendation. You could make a motion that we move it forward without a recommendation. I understand. I'm lobbying before this vote. That's right, what I'm talking about now. Okay. I want to. I, I feel like I want to pause. Yes. Sorry, I'm here to the from the Can planning you... board. Yes. I'm Ann Brooks. Oh, yeah. And uh, this got started before I was on the planning board. So I, I'm speaking quite gingerly on this. Um, but the board is attempting to look at all of the zoning changes. Uh, having to do with coming closer to a sustainable, which is an interesting thing when you think about this not being sustainable, but the sustainable, more enhancing uh, con concern. They picked off two pieces, I gather, to provide, to extend to you. Uh, one of them um, had to do with apartment complexes and pretty much that same area that were just kind of mid-zoned and, and, and passed that one on and this one. But you're going to be getting a, a whole package of zoning, proposed zoning changes, which will, I think, generally try to increase density in some places. Maybe what you're really concerned about here is that the zoning, that the planning board look more closely at the problems that North Hampton has. And now I'm stepping out of my line of really knowing how serious those problems are because I haven't been for that long. When they provide you again with all of this, and that this ought not to be decided at this stage of the game. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, my preference, quite frankly, is, uh, and I, this is almost a strategic preference, is just to actually keep on postponing this discussion uh, without a motion, because I, I really think that um, it uh, provides us with a, a forum for the kind of discussion about fixing the, uh, or, or approaching solutions that, for instance, that uh, Mr. Lake was talking about, um, or giving an opportunity for the Board of Public Works to uh, to um, review its stormwater permitting process, which I know Mr. Huntley says that he thinks is is adequate. Um, but uh, so so my in this, for this particular board for this particular rezoning, I also agree that that there's there are too many problems with the stormwater. For us to, um, for us to, um, for us to ignore that, but I also, I would be inclined just to continue to postpone it. <laughs> for the concert, are for you the, saying the are opening you, it gives are us? Are you making a motion to table this to a date uncertain, or is that, uh, is that what you were? Well, I, I have to. We have to 
that's my, I might, if, if to advance without recommendation failed, I might make that motion, but I, I don't think I can do that at this stage because there's already a motion on the table that we're, that we're discussing, so. I, I can't. If Roberts allows you to table a discussion, and then I'm yeah, but we, ta we table it for like a later meeting. And you're, and you're, just can I clarify something? Yeah. The opening, the, the, the tabling, that strategic gives you, the decision gives the opening for what? For BP, for the BPW to keep doing it? I mean, what, do we need to table it to not have them continue to do their work on this? Well, one of the things the tabling, just so we, one of the things the tabling would do, because it was referred to this committee by the city council, is as long as it's still in this committee, it cannot move forward, is my understanding, at the city council, because it's at this committee. Well, we have to give them a reason. But uh, yeah, we want, I mean, we want, we don't want, we want to stall it for purpose, right? We want to stall it because we hope and expect X, Y, Z to happen. And I'd want to be able to articulate that, and I'm not exactly clear, other than I know the status quo isn't good enough. But I, you know, what would be, what would they need to do to, just to, to have us move it forward? To, that to me, I, I want some clarity about that, and I'm not. I know it's probably being addressed to you. But can I take a shot. Uh, yeah. Okay. And this may be far longer timeline than we're talking about, but we, as Councilor Tacey pointed out, we're in the process right now of looking at how are we going to for storm, the stormwater runoff. And there's an ad hoc committee that's going to begin. It's going to look at a lot of these issues, the main issue being how we're going to pay for this. Because my guess would be, Ned, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that if we had unlimited resources, we would have fixed a number of problems, not only in this area, but other parts of the city. But we don't have unlimited resources. So part of this is a question of funds. If we had unlimited funds, I'm sure we, the city could come up with some engineering solution and that everybody would be happy with. But that is not going to happen. But there is going to be some change in how we deal with storm water. Um, and so one of the things would be maybe a question like this needs to be put off. <coughs> I think other issues are going to come up in the process of that discussion, even though the discussion is basically around what kind of, and if there is a fee structure to pay for the kind of cha changes that we're going to need. I think it's opening up a lot of discussions. One of the reasons that I brought up the previous vote that we had taken on Hospital Hill, the containment of the stormwater, I went along with that development because that's not a problem. It's contained, goes right to the river, period. This is something that we have to address. We're not addressing what happened, but we have to address what's happening on Hatfield Street. Um, how many times has Hatfield Street been closed because the water had eroded the bank and the trees fell across Hatfield Street and crushed the guardrails. It, it, it's a huge problem. The woman passed myself and my wife on Hatfield Street because we were going slow in a huge rainstorm and the tree fell. She hit the, she hit the tree. The tree fell across the guardrails on the street and she ran into the tree. Passing, I mean, and the trees are falling now. The trees are falling now towards the road. How I'm sure Ned Huntley has sent his crew out there countless times to cut trees off of Hatfield Street to allow cars to go through. I couldn't tell you how many times we've done it, but I'm no. sure we have. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I've watched it. So it's tough. if a tree falls over and the stump, stumps are huge, and the stump were to plug that 30-inch culvert, you'd have 24 million gallons of water back up behind Hatfield Street. So that's what I'm getting at. So yep. somewhere along the line, we have to figure this out, and that's you're going to be your charge and my charge and Councilor Adams' charge with the Board of Public Works to figure out what to do with this stretch, the invert in behind the Big Y flows out in a rainstorm. Even a small rainstorm, water comes out of the pipe where it's supposed to be going in. So it's a huge problem, and I don't know just exactly how to address it, but I don't think addressing it is to allow for more dense development upstream. So, so just to respond to, to what you were saying, Councilor Schwartz, um, I see, I, I'm not sure where the, the, if we can have a unified discussion. Uh, I don't know if, it, if this committee is the spot for it, but I, I do hear, what I do hear um, is that uh, at least I hear from um, from Mr. Lake that uh, the commissioners on the Conservation Commission do feel as though they're making new law, and they don't feel comfortable about it. Oftentimes, when it comes to 
particular projects. And we can work, this, this committee could work in conjunction with those commissioners uh, in, in creating a, a additions or changes to the, well, to the wetlands, the city's wetlands um, protections or, or other pieces that they feel they need to, um, that, they, that they feel is, are vital to the protection of, of, a, of a wetland um, or, to, or to a watershed or, or what have you. Uh, I also think, um, I also, I, I'd like to hear from, um, from uh, Mr. Huntley again about the, um, whether we could increase our stormwater permitting process, uh, increase the protections so that we're not just planning, I think you said we plan for the 10 year, the 10 year storm. Street drainage we do. Developments are 100 year. 100 year. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get that. I need a point of clarification from our clerk. We're posted as this meeting ending at 6.30. I'm cognizant of the fact that at a council meeting, we have to vote to extend in part because that's by ordinance. I'm new to the chair here. I'm not sure whether we need to take a vote to continue or we can just continue even if it's posted until 6.30. I don't recall a time limit on any of the committees. Even though it's unfortunate, I just want to clarify. So uh, can I ask, can I just interrupt, Mr. Hulley, do you have any, do you want to clarify any of your comments made earlier, especially in light of the public comment? No. If we, are we ready to, to vote on the proposal on the... Uh, on, well, the negative recommendation. For the negative recommendation. Can, can, I, ask, can I ask, sure. can I ask you, Professor Casey, because um, I don't want to punt on this. Is it... You, would you vote to continue to have this on the agenda, postpone it uh, indefinitely, uh, with the hopes that we could get some stronger um, input from the Conservation Commission? Would, would that be something that you could see happen? I'd like to hear from Mr. Blake. Well, I, my question is, which which way, since if you, if the if the wish is, if the intention is, um, right now we're in a situation where. Uh, when a certain uh, zoning is available, then there's a set of uh, regulatory frameworks that apply. And CONSCOM, uh, and stormwater management, that have to use those tools. The concern is that those tools are not adequate. Uh, not that the work done under those tools is less than competent or less than professional, but that the frameworks themselves are not adequate. They're not comprehensive enough. They're fragmentary don't look at the entire needs of the community. And that, so, so the question is, which is the better way to send that message back to the, because it's not necessarily that this, uh, uh, Edward was saying, oh no, we don't want more dense development. Right. It's saying, right. before we can consider that, right. uh, we need to know that somebody is stepping back and looking at the bigger picture, and is a, 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 a no vote, uh, which is currently on the table, the strongest way to do that, or postponement, the strongest way to do that. I think a no vote with commentary may be a stronger, I'm not a counselor, but I think it may be more informative to, if I were sitting on the council, to have a no vote with an explanation of why. But it's not against density development, it's against the need for this bigger framework. See, I, I, would, I completely agree with everything you're saying and would wind up in a different place where there's no recommendation and an explanation of why. I Meaning, I, like, I just feel like I, I, what's clear is that, or, or the tabling with the explanation of why. But the no vote suggests we are, I don't, I am only against this development as it's, as the current challenges present themselves. It's not like, again, we're against an addition, an expansion of this, except the current infrastructure doesn't support it. And I somehow would want to communicate that. It's not a no to development. Okay, can I just say one thing? Yes. I concur with Council's on this because um, I, I also I know that you always have you know, every <laughs> tough cases make bad law but we would be setting an interesting precedent if we if we did a no rec a no vote or no recommend or an anti recommendation uh, regarding this before we are able to really work on some of the some of the before we really come to grips with what the what the real risks are and what the real issues are. And I think we, we're hearing some of them, but until we know if we can fix them or they can be fixed through, through policy, 
I, I'm not really sure. I, I, I agree that I don't think URB should be the, should be, that land should become URB with these, with these questions in the air, but I don't think that raising the questions is sufficient to compel Edlu to do a no vote. I want some answers to those questions. So that's my okay. I, then I, I agree. Anything, so I can, I will withdraw what I can. You can. Well, you can, but I, I want to make a statement to the chair because I agree with you. I actually have been on the council a long time, and I think I've seen a lot of recommend no recommendations come from the committee. And when I sit up and look at something, it's when a committee has actually said, we recommend no. In other words, if they come forward and say, we're not making a recommendation, that happens a lot. I actually want to make a stronger statement on, on this because I want the council to sit up and say, wait a minute, here, this, if it were to pass, I want the council to say, wow, here's a zoning thing. I think it's a very good project. I think most of the councilors support the project at Lathrop. It's not about the project. And I want them to sit up and say, why? Why do these four councilors do this? So I would rather make a stronger statement with some kind of write-up. And it doesn't have to be a write-up because people will ask us. We can also express ourselves at the meeting. We can also do it in, in the minutes that are coming forward. So I would like a stronger statement. Um, so that's my... So, so I guess I, let me clarify something yes. as a matter of procedure. So we, we, we vote, let's say we were to vote no, and then it comes back to the council. Would is it on this council. coming agenda? No, it's on. Um, it wouldn't be on this. No. 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 So whatever it is, it comes back, and then and then with that no vote, we have a, we, there's going to be a discussion on the floor with all nine counselors, right? Yes. And then we can make we can make a decision. The, can, the, can the council make a decision about next steps? Sure. With this no vote, re with this no recommendation, council doesn't have to. We could even change our mind and vote yes. We could say, oh, I was having a bad day. I didn't know what I was doing. So the vote, our vote, is just what this committee has heard of a lot of the details about this. And if the committee were to vote no, the committee is just saying that we don't support this right now. We can then have discussion at the meeting, create other uh, stipulations, uh, put it, table it at the, at the meeting there until we have, maybe there's a forum we want to have which is a public meeting about this, or have future council meetings where there's presentation. So we, we have a lot of options at council, and all we are doing is making a recommendation, one way or another. Yeah, I just don't, I, I just, I personally, I think it's more, Jane, true, you're saying for effect, let's yep. say no, and I'm saying what is true to me is zero recommendation, we need to talk about this. I hear you, so we disagree, so yeah. that's yeah. why we take a vote. Okay. Does anyone else want to make another comment on that? I think the I think our, our council's clerk has a yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I realize that I'm not quite sure what you're doing here because I don't usually take your minutes. But I had understood at the last council meeting, as a council, you voted to refer a later petition back to the planning board, and that the time limit had expired and it. I didn't believe it was coming back to council anytime soon. I, I she think she's right. It may and not I be coming back to council soon. No. I know she's right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure when it's going back. So doesn't that tie into this ordinance, though? Oh. Or is that two separate issues? Can I, can yes, I say I, I think she? I think yeah. she is right. Um, I mean, I think she's right. I know she's right. But the issue is whether, whether as, as Mr. Sesco said, this particular In a certain sense, that's what we're doing. We're we're moving. We're we're discussing. We're we're debating and, and discussing policy without as and we're using this as a departure. Right? I, I agree. So so I I'm actually just procedurally I'm like I'm more comfortable tabling it. <laughs> I, I, totally I, yes I agree. I, I I'd be I'm comfortable tabling it too. It seems that that may be where we have consensus. I'm I'll sorry, I'm a child. I have to tell I you. Say, okay. Hey, motion's withdrawn. I vote. You have I a motion? Make a, I motion that we table this um, indefinitely. Okay, for a second. Somebody has to second. say it, so our clerk can oh, wait a second. Second, second, third, second. Second, third okay. fourth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, tabling motion is non, non debatable. No discussion. Yes, Steve. Can I just make a couple of comments because we've got a Sure, we're, we're going to just I'll make it as quick as I can. I'll kind of 
Conservation Commission, the soap thing of Pine Brook. Are you ever going to get involved in it? For 20, for, for 20, for 20 years, I was, ranked, I, I was raked over the coals by Mr. Steve, Biden. I'm going to have you, you can talk to, you could come to, you talk to the chair of the Conservation Commission. Planning board. <laughs> this is one little piece of what you want to rezone yeah, in the big picture. And maybe someday in the future it'll all be URB. But we're going to argue ten times stronger when you start to try to do the whole thing. So I just wanted to make those comments okay. and thank you. Thank you. No new business. Chair doesn't have any new business. Motion to adjourn. Second you entertain. Okay. All in favor. Thank you. Hi,